put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Discount Left 4 Dead. Yeah, I know, obvious, but this game desperately wants you to compare it to Left 4 Dead and it comes up short. Nazi Zombie Elite. Hitler executes Plan Z, having gone through plans A through X. No wonder the war was going so poorly for him. If one of your plans involves raising the dead, this should probably be one of your first options. Anyway, in a small German village, looking for working vehicles so that they can get to Berlin, which they soon reach, a, an American soldier, a Russian trooper, a German civilian, and a former Nazi officer walk into a bar. They find it overrun by zombies, so they team up to defeat the threat and escape Germany alive, being some of the only non-zombies left in the country. These four characters do not speak, nor do they do anything else to lend them any personality or even humanity, and they end up feeling empty and dead. Just a few lines responding to the horror around them, maybe something in the brief cutscenes, other than just, uh-oh, what was that? It would have made a huge difference. The end utterly lacks finality, there is no story here, it's just go there and do, you know, do this or that. You follow the, you know, throughout you hear one-way radio transmissions and there are a couple of different people on there and one of the most helpful and the most frequent is this priest who tells you, well, there's clearly something going on over there, so maybe, you know, don't know what, but, you know, and, excuse me, maybe the solution would be this, but that's, the, yeah. And he likes to cry out, we are doomed, which might be why at least one place you are entirely allowed to turn off the radio, and it doesn't seem to, you know, count against you point-wise or anything. They realized this gets old. And the uh, Left 4 Dead also does not have much in the way of story, but there is this sense that you are moving towards safety, moving towards somewhere that you can stay, that, you know, the zombies will no longer be a threat to you. And, you know, in that, the characters are far more engaging, which, you know, even if they were... The fact that they're engaging at all puts it you know, way above this, but they're actually very engaging. And in general, that does better what this tries to do. You know, this tries to do some of the same things, rather. And before I get too much into the negatives, more so than I already have, I will say this does have some great elements to it, which really change how you play, how you plan, how you strategize, that are not in Left 4 Dead or Contagion. There's the sniper, duh, and there is more frequent and more types of explosive traps. especially when compared to Contagion. And two of these are proximity and, you know, proximity trigger, which means you don't have to trigger them, which in these three games mostly means shooting. You know, the, con the one in Contagion does, you know, actually give you, a, you know, a proper trigger, but yeah. 
the the levels of this have titles like something of the dead or you know the like it yeah there there aren't that many of them and yet they actually repeat themselves and just in general it's just really bland and I mean, I'm not saying they had to be clever puns like in Left 4 Dead, but just if you're going to title your levels anything at all, which this really didn't have to, just give them something of an interesting touch. Just make up names for the various, like there's one the church, there's one with the cathedral. Name it something, you know. I know it's in France, but like the Notre Dame, you know, if if one of the levels was called like the Notre Dame, or you know, again, I know it's not actually in this, but if one of them was called the Reichstag, you know, that would be much more interesting than just yeah. I think Village of the Dead is one of them. So, yeah. Now the briefings all boil down to there are zombies all over, so you have to do X, Y, and Z. I don't know why they bothered with briefings. It's just, you know, well, it was probably because it was left over from Sniper Elite V2, which a lot of things in this are. But yeah, you know, the the there are no briefings in Left 4 Dead, and you don't miss them. Now, this is one of a number of games that play off the modern mythology of Nazi occultism. It's probably one of the games that does it most, you know, most consistently. I I don't remember the exact others, but at least one of them is like one of the Wolfenstein games, one of the more recent ones, and I don't know, I, I want to say that that at least has other, like, every enemy in this is based on the occult. So, yeah, and, you know, yeah, right there in the title, somewhat. It is noteworthy that there, there is more evidence, which is slim to nil, for the story presented here over the one presented in Sniper League 1 and V2, which is, of course, the same story, which is, of course, World War II is ending, but we're already starting on the Cold War because the Russians want the, you know, the V2 rocket or, you know, yeah, that kind of thing. They want those secrets, and some German scientists might be able to give them that information. So, you know, you as this American soldier in Berlin, and you know, cities and villages around Berlin have to stop that. Yeah, and it's I I don't know exactly what the plot of V three is, but it, you know, at the very least, changes locations. It's a strange idea to build a franchise around such a narrow concept, which I'm pretty sure I already commented on in at least one of the other reviews. Yeah, those games are just more interesting than, than this one. Anyway, this goes for surprisingly few of the cliches, the, the concepts purely made up for Nightmare Fuel, for their use in horror fiction. There are no fully made up clowns, no mannequins, no old dolls. We only have nursery rhymes sung creepily by children who also giggle at times. You know, one, two, come for you, three, four, you've opened the door. Yeah. There's that thing of don't, you know, don't reference something much better in your terrible product. It's just, you know, playing this, yeah, that can make you think of, you know, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, which is better than this. And I'm not even just talking about the first and last of those, which, you know, are the good ones. We do have deep-voiced, player-taunting, demonic something, you know, but, yeah, the they taunt the players so frequently that you really end up feeling like you're not having any kind of impact on their grip on Berlin and Germany. It just, there's literally one point where 
you do something that you know would suggest you're being effective and it says you know no curse you and a minute later when you move to a place that that brings you further ahead in the game they're like you know that a door opens a passage opens and then it says do come in so it's like which is it did I just do you know you were trying to prevent me from going through that passage you complained when I gained you know when when I overcame the obstacle to getting through that passage and then when I approach the passage you, you're apparently completely recovered so yeah and it'll you know ask you to, you know ask you to join it and you know it'll it'll count out loud as if it was just taught how to by watching the Muppets and you know chuckle and such real jolly these demons and you know you'll come upon these you know, ritual sites with occult symbols including pentagram, you know, pools of blood, you know, body parts strewn about, other gore, you know, lit candles. Now, I, you know, full disclosure, I have not played Nazi Zombie Elite 2, Nazi Zombie Elite Trilogy, so, you know, if something I say here is fixed in those, then it's fixed in those. I try to focus on the you know, I try not to compare something to something that came later, only that which came before. And also have played Sniper Elite V3. I doubt I will ever play them. Now, this is a standalone, you know, game for the PC. And since this is so similar to V2 in a lot of ways, I will probably restate some of what I said in my V2 review. I have not yet played Killing Floor. I own it. Both that and this were gifts. I do look forward to playing Killing Floor. It, you know, yeah, it looks pretty amazing. And with that said, I do prefer my zombies to not shoot back. And for three out of five, yes, there's five total enemy types, not counting the few boss enemies. Yeah, for 3 out of 5 in this, that is actually the case. Now, you, you know, yeah, for, for that, if if they're going to be shooting back, I tend to say, you know, why not choose a, an enemy that fits more for that? And specifically for this, you know, Sniper League V2 basically being made into a zombie shooter you know why not make a specific game for that rather than taking something that started out something of a stealth sniper and yeah trying desperately to cajole it into being a different game <sighs> somewhat of a different game and I also have not played Call of Duty zombie or otherwise Turning quickly and going quickly from sprinting to shooting are still very awkward and it's really very very clear that this engine was not made for those two courses of action to be made very casually which again for a sniper game that's more acceptable. This only has the one mode and the one campaign there's no Versus there's no, you know, what's it called, survival mode where you stay in one spot and just keep killing for, you know, minutes on end. You know, there's no playing as special zombies, which is probably a good thing because they would be no fun to play as anyway. Whether you play this for 5 hours or 50 hours, you've experienced the same things, used the same guns, heck, one hour into this you've used most of the guns and experienced most of the different 
situations. The Sniper Elite series is not one that really gives us things, you know, levels or gameplay that has us coming back. You, know, you play through one of these games once, maybe go for multiplayer, you know, yeah. This has much simpler gameplay than its rivals, Leopard and Contagion. It gets old quick, you know, gets really monotonous and just, you know, basically either you find it enjoying or you find it tedious and just repetitive and you you may not play it again. You, you get into it or you stop playing very early on, possibly before you even complete it. Which, it took me four hours to complete this in single player. I've also completed in co-op. I don't really have numbers for that because, you know, it's like you might play the same level several times in co-op over several different sessions and yeah. But I have played it over three weeks where normally I play a game for at least two. I extended it in this case because Terminator Genesis came out and I tend not to do more than one review a week. But yeah, in those three weeks I've played single player for 13 and a half hours total and co-op for 12 and a half hours total. So, yeah, upwards of 30 hours of, yeah, overall time spent playing this game. Now, yeah, it, it gets to be a real grind, excuse me, and co-op was clearly what this was meant, how this was meant to be played it can get really boring and frustrating real fast in single player. Now this is more fast and action oriented than Sniper Elite and Sniper Elite V2. You know it can be pretty exciting though as others have noted it gets kind of boring after you've defeated you know, 20 or 30 zombies that barely react to anything other than a headshot. Yes, a sniper game where the focus is on headshots. I don't know about you, me, I did not see that coming. The, the problems of Sniper Elite 1 and Sniper Elite 2 are largely still present and this is much like Sniper Elite B2, this is essentially, you know, a cosmetic upgrade to or, or alternate version and this gives you an awkward but useful kick basically you can kick zombies to make them fall over which can really give you some much needed breathing room and it's the only attack that you can do regardless of how much or how little ammo you have for the various weapons you're carrying now this is survival horror where you know meaning you you know you're keeping close eye on how much ammo you have which guns you want to be using you you know you're careful to note where your enemies are and you know how many and which types you know you take defensive positions and leave them for other defensive positions and such and I realized that a, a lot of horror games are survival horror and I figured it might be interesting to briefly you know distinguish so to, to highlight that you can do horror without it being survival horror the first two doom games have not played the third one qualify as horror not purely because of the dark tone but because it, these enemies genuinely are horrifying but you're not you know super careful about ammo and such it's you know somewhat of a straightforward arcade shooter and you know less do you think that you know early to mid 90s first person shooters were necessarily you know, Quake if I recall Quake 1 and 2 also qualifies horror games but not survival horror but yeah something that does qualify, I would argue, as survival horror from, yeah, early to mid-90s 
as far as first person shooters go, is Wolfenstein 3D, because in that you can actually, to an extent, limit how many enemies you're facing at once. You know, noise reverberates through these, you know, claustrophobic tunnels, and if you go into a room that only has like one enemy and you just open fire on him immediately, even though he has his back turned, a couple of doors might open and a few more soldiers might come in, and the amount of ammo you have is not necessarily going to keep you, you know, you may want to, especially like the, the, you know, the two automatic weapons, you may want to really save for when there's a lot of enemies facing boss enemies and such. But, yeah, you know, if you instead walked into that room and stabbed the one soldier who had his back turned, then you only, you're only facing the one at a time and you can keep that going some in some areas but yeah I would argue that qualifies you know that's one of the earliest survival horror games which is maybe also why it's not as much of a survival horror. you know you have far less ammo considering how many enemies you face in much more recent survival horror now the the controls are still smooth and it's fairly rare that you get stuck on debris that you feel like you should just be able to climb. <sighs> this game was not helped by my playing it as Contagion added three new, completely free, and quite good, some of them great, levels to the game. This is this has a level selector in both single player and co-op, and you know you can vault, and it'll actually prompt you to, so you don't, you know, you're not walking against something expecting to be able to vault without being able to vault. Although there are areas that look like you should be able to vault that don't allow you to. And the cover system here allows you to easily back away from cover, and there are times where you can aim over or to the side of the cover, but it'll often give you a bad angle where you'll be staring right into part of the cover. You know, you really miss the Red Orchestra 1 and 2 ability to rest a gun horizontally or vertically against a surface to steady your shot and stay in cover and such. You end up just crouching and the like instead of using cover. And there are places that look like they should offer cover but that you can't use and there are times where you can take cover and you really don't it makes no sense why you would like you can take cover against like a bookcase that blocks your path so there's literally you're not taking cover from anything if the enemies are gonna show up they're gonna be from the other side yeah I... now this has collectibles and steam achievements there are three difficulty settings and it's challenging even on easy and right from the start. You can also set the amount of enemies which, you know, independently of the difficulty setting and if you don't set it, it will just fit the amount of players to, yeah. This has online international leaderboards and those are pretty much the point of playing this for any, you know, yeah, for, for much of any time. It's, you know, see, excuse me, see how well you can do on that. Excuse me. And, you know, the point system was already there in the, you know, the, the previous two games, but here it's basically, it's, it's almost the only goal you you might say and you know considering that the game does tally up these earned yeah it's a remarkably pointless game
you regenerate life there is no tutorial to teach you how you know about the distance and wind and how to correct for them you know and yeah you basically have to learn that in the field and that is where you best learn things but a tutorial that just gives you a little bit that would still do a lot there, there is some written about in the manual but who reads manuals today there is no server list and the only filter is selecting any level or choosing one of the five total levels and you can create private match if you're waiting in a lobby for a while you can tell it ignore lobby and you know keep searching but it you can't you know leave a match and say ignore this match and then keep searching if you leave a match and then you try searching you may end up in the exact same match that you were trying to get out of much like in Assassin's Creed this is one of the only co-op multiplayer games that I've tried where you can't look up much of any information about the match. If you look in the direction of one of the other players, you can see that they're in that direction and you get like you it'll it'll give you their name or their handle anyway. And you know, if they are like bleeding out or something, you'll also be able to tell that from pointing at that's it you you can't you know even if you pause or anything you you can't you know can't see how much the other players have earned you can't see the difficulty setting you can't it doesn't even tell you which yeah basically you know it'll it'll tell you what level it is in you know if you if you're in the lobby or if you you know when you first join it it'll give you you know the the title of the level and it won't, it won't say number this of how many so you know if you the first time if you join a match and it's like the last level you won't know that yeah you know and and yeah the the you'll get the the title of the level and it'll let you select weapons and it'll give you the pointless pointless briefing and that's it otherwise you cannot look up any information and it just bewilders me I, I'm not sure you could look up much when you're any information in Sniper Elite V2 but whenever you play co-op in Sniper Elite V2 it's basically you know it's a more or at least my experience with Sniper Elite V2 co-op you know the two players might know each other and this you know you're not necessarily gonna know the other players and yeah you end up in matches where you know early on you'll have no idea what's going on and yeah you know and and it'll tell you the objective is if you press tab and that's it you know there's and the objectives are just you know survive or keep moving and you know get to this you know point and and it'll also have an objective marker the the co-op allows for two to four players and you know you really do cover each other and yeah, you know, there's it can be pretty great co-op experience with the different players, you know, using different guns and covering different angles and such in order to make it out of Germany with your guns and your lives intact. If you are sufficiently wounded, you will start to bleed out, which gives your co-op partners one minute to you know, come over to hold the use button for about a second or two, and yeah. 
there are very few visual and audio warnings for, you know, yeah, for 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 such a an arcade, you know, co-op game, especially when compared to Left 4 Dead, which, yeah, you know, they're, they're all over that place, and, you know, it won't, you know, you can't be restrained temporarily, you know, yeah. When, when you're not in camp, but a special infected has you, you know, does, yeah, has grabbed you or is doing some damage to you or such. And it's not gonna really tell you when a special zombie has arrived. And early on, you might discover it too late, which is a fair enough, you know, I can respect a game that wants to do that, 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 tell, you know, that, that basically puts it to the player, you have to be enough, you know, your situal awareness must not, not kind of suck, dude. Yeah, and, you know, the, it does not, you know, no one yells reload, you can't see what the other players are carrying, much less what they're using until they are already done using it, which just raises the question of why they even brought in that one, you know, element from Left 4 Dead of, you know, bleeding out and then bringing back, and, you know, not that only Left 4 Dead has bleeding out and bringing back by co-op partners and such, but, yeah, you know, since, since it's trying for Left 4 Dead, why only that one element, as far as, you know, giving warnings and such, Again, the, these characters say nothing to each other. You know, there's text chat, there's voice, that's it. You know, if the players don't communicate with each other, there's going to be no communication between, yeah. But, but yeah, you know, Bleeding Out and Bringing Back was also in V2, and, yeah, they probably left it in because... Because they, they left a lot of things from V2 in, and this might well be just one of those. You know, it doesn't... It, it's just, it's strange for a clone of another game to do so little to differentiate. Or, I mean, not so much strange, but it's just, it shows a lack of quality, you might say, that it does so little. Contagion is a very flawed game. There are a number of problems. Personally, I love it. And what makes that a more compelling Left 4 Dead clone than this is that it actually does a number of things different. It's a very different game from Left 4 Dead. So if you can overlook its problems, you know, you can play it, you can play Left 4 Dead, there'll be very different experiences. And you know, that's how you do a, a clone. You know, it's like Just Cause compared to Grand Theft Auto. You know, it's more or less the same idea as Grand Theft Auto, but it adds that you can destroy a bunch of different, you know, buildings and such around the, you know, the setting. And, you know, basically, you know, gives you a couple of things that are really badass and really fit this kind of action movie hero motif and yeah again that makes you you know you actually remember then that it's yeah it's not it's not really just straightforward and I'm not saying that every not every zombie first person shooter co-op survival horror game has to outdo Left 4 Dead only the obvious clones of Left 4 Dead have to. And, I mean, playing Sniper Elite 1 and Sniper Elite V2, I did not get a Left 4 Dead vibe from them. It's only this one. And it's not like zombies and, you know, co-op and such are the... Yeah, zombies in a co-op title like this is the only way to evoke a Left 4 Dead vibe. You know, Payday, very much. You know, it's... It's very much earned its nickname of Left for Cops. The
this saves checkpoints in co-op as well as single player so you don't have to redo an entire level when you die for some reason this did not you know bring back or carry over the kill tally of you know v2 in which you know two co-op players have to fight a you know an infinite number of enemies in a closed off level where you know they compete over points but they do have to keep each other alive as well yeah why didn't why isn't that in this it you know i mean that would basically be the survival mode of left for dead and since this is so happy to borrow so heavily from left for dead yeah and again this only has the one mode the co-op is drop in drop out lag is fairly rare timeouts are very rare and you know you can often find three co-op players that you know that know what to do and in general you know i'd say about half the time i was able to find you know a co-op match that ran as it should you know with, with no lag and such now the ai is very strict this is especially obvious and downright embarrassing the many places where they planted jump scare zombies where from the second time you enter that area you know okay a zombie's gonna come from over there so you just take a few steps you get close enough and then it jumps out and then you immediately shoot it without it having any chance to attack you it's just the first time you might run right you know run right run right into that area and that zombie will you know give you a quick startle and you know attack you and yeah and every other time it'll just be okay here's you know this is the place where another one comes up let's walk slowly there it is bang let's move on you know if you're into that sort of thing the yeah it, it very much has set areas for you know horde attacks or what is here referred to as siege there is no AI director you know controlling the pace here there is you know there are some random elements and you may be trapped temporarily trapped in an area fighting off you know fighting the enemies until they're all dead as a door locked with an occult symbol is you know the the occult symbol will basically fade out of existence when you've killed them all and then you can proceed I don't know why not every door that you have to open is closed with something like you know locked with something like this because there are just a few doors and much like in Sniper with V2 you can't tell because so many of the doors are just locked or already open so when you actually face a door well okay I do have to open this I guess you know it it'll sometimes be indicated by the objective marker if you don't like recheck okay is this a door with an objective marker then you might walk right past it again this is this has happened to to me and to a number of other players who clearly knew what they were doing walk right past the door and then eventually you know check objective marker okay it is this door go up to open it with the kick because anytime you press space he'll pretty much kick regardless of if he's using something or if he just means to actually kick the the zombies have sickly yellow skin and you know glowing eyes they'll stumble towards you swinging wildly you know if if they're facing away from you they'll do this 180 degree turn where they also kind of you know stumble and such and you know they may do a, a spin attack which 
you know, considering they are dead, it, you know, they're surprisingly graceful. The there are times in this where you end up in an Alan Wake situation where you know you can get mobbed real easily and it gets really frustrating, especially in this if you can't if you're having trouble keeping the zombies away from you. In part because this lacks the cool and memorable dark darkness light you know feature of Alan Wake in which every enemy has some darkness to it. Some of the weaker ones, they're all darkness, some like you know Ravens, crows, I don't remember exactly. And I'm not real good at recognizing birds anyway. Especially not from a very, very far away. Yeah, you know, your basic human enemies, you'll, you have to focus the, the flashlight on them until the darkness away before you can kill them. And even after that, you can still, you know, point it directly at them and they'll be slowed down or you know, such. But you can also shoot at them before the darkness is gone to also slow them down and such. And, you know, it also doesn't have the dodge mechanic, which, while awkward, was very useful at quickly getting out of situations where you were mobbed. You know, the the developers that are really thought about, well, what if you get into this situation? What if they're all around you and then they gave you that feature? Which doesn't, you know, it's not like a just get out of trouble free card. There's The game is still very challenging, but that, you know, really, yeah, it's immensely useful of a feature. And this not having it leads to more frustration from those situations. Where before it was ongoing battles and authentic propaganda posters, now doom and gloom is in the air of the war-torn Berlin and surrounding villages and such. The, you know, you move through the few and two similar environments of you know streets and floors of you know partially destroyed buildings where you know sometimes you can go to upper floors or the basement and such you know you'll find abandoned guard posts and gun crates and such tanks that have been you know partially destroyed and you know with black magic symbols along with the swastika graffitied or drawn in blood in an ugly manner, you know, corpses litter the streets, some hang from ropes, you know, yeah, now the city is full of slow shambling zombies that have to get close to attack you, and you'll probably want to headshot them, which can be really annoying when they, you know, with the shambles, with the shambling, They'll, you know, move up and down, side to side, making distant headshots really annoying, yeah. They'll screech, snarl, and moan. Others have noted that it gets easy to strategize when you, you know, once you know the spawn pattern. Now, strategy involves, you know, do you go to a high position, do you cover a corner, do you keep moving? Do you remain still in a certain area? Do you stick together or split up? Are you inside or outside? And is everyone in the same, you know, which rooms are you in and the like? Zombies do not climb and are seldom above you. They, you know, some of them will use doors and stairwells that you also use and some of them will surprise you. I'll get into that a little later. Of course, if you are next to a building, even if it's not a school area, you will, you know, face jumpers, which just goes to show that even the Nazi zombie apocalypse will not end cyberbullying of, you know, girls perceived to be promiscuous.
the few boss fights can be really frustrating. <laughs> it's if you don't headshot an enemy, they might just come right back. You get a bonus for killing them regardless, and you know, re-killing someone that resurrected after you first killed them. Now, after I'd played four hours, I already had 35% of the Steam achievements, and after 16 hours of playing seven and a half of them co-op, I had 81%, which is where I'm at now, and probably all I can get. You still get distance bonuses, but you don't get, like, how many you kill in how long an amount of time. You know, you do get for how many you killed with an explosive, how many you shot with, you know, how, how many you got with one shot. Now, it's not, that's not limited now to, you know, penetrating several with the one same bullet. But, yeah, you know, I don't know why they only have those. You know, the, the explosive one now allows for way more to, to die, but that's also because there are way more enemies. And, yeah, it, again, feels like they didn't make that much, you know, change that much from Sniper League V2. Bodies sort of burn away, you know, pretty fast after they're completely dead, which might, you know, you may want to take them down or just only temporarily kill them so that they might resurrect in order to loot their body in time. And sometimes there can be a lot of these zombies that don't have the ammo that you're looking for. And yeah, considering that looting means, you know, killing them from up close and possibly not killing them at first means that sniping if you snipe you're much less likely to be able to loot especially you know the further the shot is the less you can loot you know so the more points you'll get but the less bullets you'll and and again this is this is still not a game where you can really just run through it sniping which to be fair neither was sniper lead or sniper lead b2 but they were still way more, you know, in those games, if you snipe, you are much more likely to... You won't have as difficult a time when you're facing the, you know... Yeah, you can, you can face less enemies at the same time because you're maybe taking some of them out before you actually... Yeah, you know, you're taking them out one by one instead of going right at them. The you know, the the enemy includes you know, just zombie soldiers which attack with melee. You know, they'll have a broken bottle, or a shovel, a wrench, a hammer, a thick wooden stick or straight up a severed limb and it really makes you wonder why you don't pick up one of those things and melee attack them you know the the kick is okay but a proper melee attack would be really nice now a number of them have a knife sticking out of their head to you know put all you know all wonder all questioning to rest these guys have died. You know, they came back, but they did die. And, you know, they'll be wearing like a soldier's cap or one of those steel helmets, maybe a gas mask or nothing at all. Then there are these skeletons, which, you know, they basically only have lungs and a heart. You know, there's nothing, no, no skin, no other organs, and yeah. They're largely a reskin of the, you know, the main soldier zombie, except they explode into, you know, bones when you kill them. And, you know, which, you know, guess what you're supposed to shoot? The, the you know, few remaining organs, which really shows you, you know, that was all that was keeping this thing together, which is a pretty cool idea. 
but yeah, other than them exploding into bones, you know, there it tends to be that the you know there you you doing damage to enemies and killing enemies tends to be more bloody than gory. You know, you can yeah explode them into bones and you can take off the head with a headshot of other enemies, not the skeletons. That's about it, you know, and again compared to its its competition, you know, contagion, you can blow limbs off for tactical reasons. And you know, Left 4 Dead you can also in Left 4 Dead, if you shoot enough, no matter where you're shooting, they will eventually die, you know. And that can be real useful because maybe you're in, at an angle where it's more, you know, it's more convenient to shoot them in, like, the lower leg or something. If you're inside a building, you're looking out a window, and zombies are climbing up the building you're outside of, Maybe there are a few legs dangling down. You can shoot the legs rather than going outside of the building and thus, you know, exposing yourself more. And, yeah, it's just... Again, in Contagion, it's straight up a tactical move. You know, you eliminate risk by blowing off limbs but not the head. If you blow off the head, obviously they're dead. But if you, you know take off their arms. They have less reach, much like in the House of the Dead games. If you, you know, if you, you know, destroy their legs, they will crawl at you instead, being much less dangerous, but not, you know, still dangerous than normal, and they're not dead, so, you know, let's say a zombie might spawn in its place. If you kill it, you just avoided that when spawning. Now, yeah, so, yeah, you miss that, and, yeah, in Left 4 Dead, you can blow off any limb you want, and you can even blow them entirely up, you know, with explosions, and you'll just see limbs flying off in different directions, which is the kind of fun visual you want in a game like this. And, yeah, here it just ends up boring, annoying, and frustrating that, it's only the upper body that will kill, you know, it's the, the, and the skeletons, it's only the, the specific, you know, the, the heart and the lungs. And, you know, it's, it is still overall easy to kill enemies, you know, and obviously you don't have to worry as much about where you hit when you use some of the really heavy guns. And the, but, but yeah, the, you know, the skeletons can be really tough to take down, you know, they, you know, big, strong bones, they, you know, I guess in their lifetime, they got milk. And they will attack with their hands rather than at an object. Then there are the kamikaze, which carry a grenade that they kind of swing up and down the arm and that's cool because there's an achievement for shooting the grenade so yeah and they're you know they've got belts full of you know dynamite and such that all of which will blow up about one second after they reach you or they get shot you know and they, they'll also trigger prox you know proximity explosives but yeah so, you know, even if they do get really close to you, you do still have a second to get a little bit away. And when they blow up, yeah, it's, it's an actual explosion. You know, they will kill zombies within the, what's it called? The, yeah, close enough to them to be destroyed by the explosion. And there's at least one place where you can vault over something and the guy will just completely stop in his tracks, like, what happened? You know, that's, and that's, that's always fun when you discover such an obvious glitch. 
now and there are times when they just spawn to blow up in the spot and this sometimes happens with a lot of them and I don't know if they're going for a minefield kind of look to that but it ends up just looking more like really boring fireworks you know you can think of the kamikaze as the boomer of this game Then you have the elite, this big, slow, tough enemy that, you know, he's he's a Nazi officer and he's carrying a machine gun, a straight up machine gun. And yeah, you'll want to snipe, you know, headshot him. And, you know, the, since he does a lot of damage, you will, you know, want to use like cover and crouching and such to break line of sight with him, and you know, yeah, you you can shift his attention if you you know different if you're in different areas around him and you know shooting at him or going a little close to him and such, and you know he does have friendly fire if there are zombies in between him and you he will just straight up hit them excuse me with the bullets he fires as well so that can also be useful think of him as the tank of Left 4 Dead and you know he the kamikaze and the zombies that rise up which I'll get to again kind of they're the reason that the players don't just form a square thus covering all four corners and just move together or even stay in one place the elite forces you to take cover from him and focus your fire on him which is nice because this is in spite of him spawning along with a number of other zombies often not always but yeah so you you don't just get to just shoot him someone has to also shoot those other zombies or you have to keep moving so that they don't and he'll keep going towards you he's slow but he will keep going towards you until you kill him and if you end up you know backing yourself into a corner that might just be it for you with him so yeah and you have the the kamikaze who may force the players to split up in order to limit the amount of damage you know if the four of you were together and nobody managed to kill him before he's too you know yeah before he gets too close that's it you all just die from that one enemy and you know and since he'll he will blow up your explosive traps as well so yeah try not to blow him up too close to those and keep him away from the ones that are proximity triggered you know yeah and you know he he may force you to pull back, seek shelter, and that's also true of the ones that rise up. And you know there are also zombie snipers, which you know they'll they'll fire a shot. If they hit you, they will float. Yes, they all float away to sometimes very close to where they just were, but always above you and within sniper range of you, and yeah it can get really awkward when they like go back and forth because they may be sometimes they will jump very close you know float very close to you and they'll just you know move on to the next place and that yeah and it doesn't seem like it's supposed to just be forcing you to be very careful about when to shoot and how to try to shoot him you know he will stand still when he aims at you but that also does mean that he is aiming at you. He is ready to shoot you. You can shoot him as he floats through the air. But yeah, it again just seems like they didn't really think it through how this guy behaved. It yeah, it feels glitchy and the their solution to the glitch was just to say, okay, if he floats to the wrong place, he'll just go to the go to a better place then. And yeah. Now yeah, you know, you can think of him as the smoker 
of this game and you know as far as the Left 4 Dead characters go and that does leave this without a hunter, a witch, and given that this did come out after Left 4 Dead 2, also a spitter, a charger, and a jockey. And yeah, you can really tell that this does not have that many special zombies and that the special zombies don't do that much to, you know, don't do enough to really force the players to switch up you know, what they're doing and such, especially compared to Left 4 Dead. The zombies, I already mentioned, they'll rise up. They will basically, you know, dig themselves right up out of the ground or actual, you know, floors and stairs and such, yeah. And never leaving a, you know, trace of them having dug themselves out. It's less awkward when it's, you know, when they use a portal, which will sometimes be on a vertical surface, you know, as long as it's a flat surface, yeah, where basically you know, this is also true of the ones that resurrect and such. It's this kind of, you know, fire and brimstone, you know, sparks flying, and it forms this pentagram around the zombie that is, you know, spawning there. And, yeah, it looks pretty awesome, especially when, it, when a lot do it at the same time. And sometimes that is very much the case. And this is, you know, pretty much how... It's, it's pretty much the MO of skeletons when, when they appear. Otherwise, they will literally walk right out of flames. If, like, a building is partially on fire, they will walk out of the flames completely untouched. Which, you know, you can maybe say, oh, shouldn't they be on fire? And say, We've seen zombies on fire before. Zombies going out of, you know, moving out from flames not at all touched by the flames yeah that's pretty cool that's uh, you know you that's something you want to do in these games is give the player something that it's you know yeah nightmarish with you know your thing that's not that's not real that can't be real and yeah that there are a few things in this that that do that and I may have already mentioned yet yeah, you know, this display is also easy to see from very far away. So, again, if they're spawning, even if they're, yeah, if they leave a portal, even if it's way far away, you can instantly tell because it is this orange, glowy, fire kind of deal. And you can actually shoot the, you know, whatever is coming out of the portal as they come out. It's not it doesn't shield them or anything you know and shooting enemies but not killing them can knock them down and or stun them and sometimes a, hel a headshot will only take the helmet off now the few bosses are not very creatively designed in part because the focus of sniping which you know, you really shouldn't have that kind of limitation on a game that has boss enemies. This is something that the other sniper, the previous sniper lead games avoided, which you could also say that, you know, how do you even do a boss enemy in, you know, a direct shooter game, you know, that's, yeah, in a sniper shooter kind of game, that's something that the Hitman franchise has certainly always struggled with. Now, but, but yeah, and the, and, and, you know, conversely also, it doesn't make sense to have, you know, to, to put a boss enemy in a game that focuses on sniping. And, you know, basically, it, you know, the sniping only makes so much sense in this anyway. 
if you want to really quickly kill someone, you'll want to do, you'll, yeah, want to headshot them. And the skeletons, you'll want to shoot them in the torso. There are a few times where, you know, a source of light shining up against a wall means that the shadow of the elite will appear before he walks into frame. And, yeah, it gives a nice, significant you know, yeah, a significant air to his approach, as well as warning you, which, yeah, quite nicely. Now, there is no real squad AI in this. Zombies will move towards the player but, you know, you can distract their attention if, you know, if another player comes up behind them, yeah, you can, so, so, you know, you can split their focus between several, which can be a very useful tactic. I mean, you know, they won't march, they, they might gang up on you, but it doesn't look like that's intentional, it's just, well, you're there, you know, they, they might be in, like, couple different like you know yeah let's say a few of them are you know at a 60 degree angle from where you are some of them might be 100 some 120 degrees they all walk towards you because you're there and they're trying to kill you but it's not that they really meant to split up like that and try to move towards you it's just they they walk in a straight line towards you you know so from from where they started out in relation to where you are now the headshots are not limited to the sniper from far away you can get them up close with pistol shotgun smg fire and you know the the double barrel shotgun can be exceedingly useful against the elite up, sh up close, but that does also mean that he's very close to you, and he is extremely dangerous when he is very close to you. So, yeah, and that's, I like that they did that, that there is, you know, if they just do, if, if you screwed up and the elite got way close to you, and someone has that double barrel shotgun, you know, time it right, get, in, get a good angle so that he's not, you know, too close for you to properly shoot or, you know, so he doesn't fire off too many rounds into you before you do so, which will also obviously, you know, make you bleed out. So, yeah. And these are classic zombies, which I very much appreciate. You know, they're dangerous up close, they're dangerous because there are many of them and they seem to be infinite in overall amount. And they keep coming until you kill them. It's not that they're fast or agile, it's not that they shoot back. You know, yeah, Romero zombies, that's, that's how I like them. Some of the spawn patterns get really spammy. This is more of a full-on tactical third-person shooter, you know, with no real stealth elements than the first two Sniper Elite games. And, you know, it it's still very... It can still be very useful and give you a lot of points to take out enemies from a distance. And, you know, successful sniper kills can grant you the kill cam which you know visually shows the body parts hit and you, know, you can see the damage they're doing to organs and bone you know you can adjust the frequency of these you you know turn them off or on separately even for co-op and single player and it is a lot of fun to see this bullet just destroy the body that you fired it into. Although there is now less color and nuance, you know, than there was in Sniper League V2. 
because they are just sickly yellow, gray, and such, you know, there's not the, the nice, you know, really clearly strong red blood, the white bones, you know, the various organs have, you know, their various colors and such. And it's not that no undead enemies would be fun to see that x-ray kill cam of you know of a bullet going through them you know imagine Dracula being shot and you see it you know first you see the black clothes maybe the you know doesn't he have some some white in the middle of like like a uh, an undershirt under a suit I don't remember exactly you know but but yeah and you know the red blood the white bone and such and you know yeah the the camera follows the bullet going in and sometimes also going back out in brutal detail of the body and you know showing you know with an anatomically correct x-ray and you know, sometimes it it is just following the bullet without the x-ray but and and it's it is still noteworthy the x-ray kill cam I think is unique to the Sniper Elite series and they are not these pre-rendered kind of things they are calculated on the spot you know it's you're not gonna see it be the exact same way for for different you know it yeah the the exact angle the exact entry point will determine exactly how it comes out looking and yeah now yeah it's it's rare in co-op and I have not seen it happen with one of the co-op partners at all. I have not seen their, you know, x-ray cam. Yeah, their kill cam at all, x-ray or otherwise, which is a great decision. I'm really glad they did that because now you may have as much as three partners. And if anyone got the co-op, you know, any anyone got the, the kill cam, for each of those, it would just be, it might be non-stop at times, you know. And, you know, you do see your partner's camera in V2, and that's because there's only the one partner, you're only two players. And you can also turn that off. Or at least limit how often it's shown. And, yeah, um, that, that was, you know, of all the things that I criticize for them not changing particularly from v2 this is a change they made that is immensely you know I cannot thank them enough and, and again it's not that the kill cam is not there in co-op it's just that you only get your own if You know, to steady your shot, you can crouch or even lie down. You can also take a deep breath, which if you have enough lung, you know, yeah, enough air in your lungs, the, you know, time will appear to slow down from your perspective. And you may even get a an aim assist, which is this red box that moves as you move the sniper scope. And exactly where the red box points is where the bullet will go and if you're like pointing at the head of an enemy you know the box will move you know on the head as you but if you then point like off to the side of the head and there might be a few more meters the red box will actually respond to that because it's not gonna behave the bullet is not gonna go exactly the same place depending on distance and what it might hit and such and yeah you know the it sniper shots are affected by wind strength bullet drop and such and you know you can get an indicator of wind strength wind strength which updates from wherever you point it and you know this is especially true you know it gets more and more I guess exponentially by how far how great the distance you know that you're trying to shoot and you know 
yeah, the, the effects are barely, if at all, felt from closer shots. Now, if you sprint, your heart rate will race and your your lungs will empty, thus, yeah, making it harder to shoot, you know, at a distance with the sniper, but it's the only gun that gets less, you know, none of the others you can, can you tell at all. You get extra bonus per, you know, how distant the shot was, you know, headshots give extra points, you know, moving targets and how many it actually I'm not entirely sure the moving target one is still there, but but yeah. Excuse me, the the how many the bullet penetrates. So, you know, if you can line them up in yeah, in a straight line and you fire, the bullet might hit them all. Now, you don't necessarily really have to snipe very much in this, which I do appreciate that they give you the option, you know, if you don't want to snipe or, yeah, whether you do or don't want to snipe, there are areas where you get to choose. Now, you know, sniping is immensely useful for keeping enemies far away from you, making them less dangerous, providing cover for other for co-op players, and taking out, you know, elites, kamikazes, and skeletons. But sniping does mean that you cannot loot. And it can be real difficult if you if you don't loot much, you might well run out of ammo. And yeah, you know, because looting me may mean sprinting, you know, if you snipe someone from very far away, to get there in time to loot, you will have to sprint, and the moment you even start sprinting, your next shots are going to be much more, you know, you then have to wait for your heart rate to drop, and your lungs to fill back up with air. Now... And, you know, if, if if you snipe also, you it might be easier for the enemies to mob you since, you know, some of them aren't very far away and sometimes they'll come from an area you didn't expect. And if you're busy sniping, you might lose track of ones close to you. And, You know, and especially also because you're moving slowly if you're moving at all when you snipe. You know, not while you're sniping, but in between shots, you may slightly change where you are, but you're not going to move fast because heart rate, yeah. Now, in favor of the sniper is that you do get these infinite ammo boxes, which were also in V2. You're promised one of these per safe house, and they have bullets for any sniper rifle. You know, the, the one you're carrying, it will refill with just the one click. You don't start with full ammo, depending on the difficulty you'll have, you know, yeah, more or less ammo. Yeah, depending. And, you know, one of the SMGs allows for about 426 bullets total. And the rest are less than 200, you know, sometimes less than 100, some way less than 100, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, I'm not sure I, put that correctly, but yeah, the the other SMGs, it's less than 200 bullets per, and then the rest of the guns, it's 100 or less, including for the sniper, and sometimes way less than 100. And yeah, you know, you may want to run around close to the zombies, 
fire a secondary gun at them, and then loot them for ammo. This has a lot of recoil, which is really annoying, especially, again, compared to Contagion and Left 4 Dead. The guns do vary in, you know, speed, rate of fire, clip size, you know, whether or not they have, like, bolt action cock you know, whether you have to cock per bullet and such, power, recoil, accuracy, and effective range, but they're still too similar to each other, and there are too few types, especially, again, compared to Contagion Left 4 Dead, you know, there aren't any rifles that aren't for sniping, it doesn't really distinguish that much between SMG and Assault Rifle, which I appreciate, you know, back then, yeah, there was just less of a, you know, today we had very, you know, you're not going to bring a Tech 9 if you really need to shoot, you know, from afar, and you're not going to bring an AR-15 if, you know, if you're going for, you know, spray and pray, print spray scenario, you know. And back then, yeah, it was a bit more diffuse, which was which. And, you know, and this doesn't have melee at all, other than the kick, which I'm not sure does any damage. It just knocks them back or away. And you can't properly direct it. You just, you trigger that he does the kick. It's not, you can't at all direct it. It's always the exact same kick. And, yeah, you know, melee in this could be great. You know, imagine if they gave you a bayonet. You know, maybe it's mounted to, you know, a rifle, maybe it's not. Maybe you can even choose whether or not it's mounted to, because that makes a huge difference. And, yeah, I haven't seen that many games actually give you that, you know, allow you a rifle that has the bayonet at the end of it, where you can, like, stab with it, as they would do. And, you know, they could give you one of those spades or shovels that they use to dig trenches, you know, that would make a lot of sense. And I think some of the Nazi zombies do have that, so, yeah. You don't carry any healing items in this, like I said, it's all regenerating health you know, much less do you com communicate about it. Now, it is nice, though, that like Contagion and Left 4 Dead, there is no truly bad gun in this. There's no gun that you're like, I'm, I'm stuck with that until I get, you know. And, you know, unlike other, you know, some sometimes happens in those, you know, maybe especially Contagion, you know, is you're not going to be left without a good gun if you don't make it to the safe house before everyone else. You know, you, you won't necessarily get the best gun if you don't rush, and, you know, you may not get very many of the extra explosives, if any at all, you know, but explosive traps. But, yeah, you still, in Contagion, if you're playing with some players who really don't, give half a crap about whether or not everyone has a proper gun, yeah, you might end up not, you know, not picking up the, the better guns, and they might even go around and take all the ammo that you need, you know, and that doesn't happen here. So, you know, if you are playing with people who don't co-op well, in this, it's less of a bother than in that. Now... And you, you know, you can usually get more ammo for, you know, usually for for whatever gun you have, especially if it's something that you, you know, that you picked up at the, you know, at the the briefing when you entered the level, which is not, you know, like I said, it's drop in, drop out. The the players can be seconds away from the level ending, you'll still get the, the briefing, you'll still get to choose, 
you know, the weapons for that level. And then when the next level starts, you again get a briefing, get the title of the level, and get to choose weapons. And, you know, the other players can, you know, maybe hurry you along. You get, you don't necessarily get more than a minute to choose the weapons at the briefing screen. But, yeah, you can carry a sniper rifle, a secondary weapon, a pistol, and explosive traps. And the thing with explosive traps is you can carry two of each item. But when you're at the briefing screen, it acts like you can only carry, like, four or five, something like that. When really, yeah, you can easily carry way more. It's just, it won't let you... You know, it, it claims that your carry capacity is full at that, but yeah. Now, this has nine sniper rifles, so there are a couple of new ones, even though you don't necessarily have to snipe in this much. There are two shotguns, which are both new. You know, wouldn't have made much sense to run around with a shotgun in Sniper Elite 1 and 2. One of them is a 12-gauge, and the other is the double barrel. It's loud and very destructive. They call it the Preacher. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. Five SMGs, which includes two new ones, four pistols, which includes one new one, and then two grenades, you know, two, two types of grenades, an American and the German version, you know, proximity mines that, you know, the, the various explosive traps you plant now glow. You still can't accidentally, uh, you know, activate them. I think in the first one you could accidentally, so you might be placing a tripwire and then accident, you know, and then even as you're trying to walk away from it, trigger it, so that was real obnoxious, but I believe in the second one they did eliminate that. You can't accidentally trigger your own. And, yeah, in this as well, you know, your co-op partner can accidentally trigger it and they can tell where it is because you don't want to go that close in case it's about to be triggered, you know, and you can't necessarily tell how, you know, someone might sneak up near the explosive, yeah. But, yeah, the, and then there are these dynamite, you know, that you can plant, which you have to shoot to trigger, and as I already mentioned, trip mine, which is still trip mine, not proximity. And also the Panzerfaust, which is the German rocket launcher. Now, I may have already mentioned, but you can pick any of the snipers in, in the briefing screen uh, when you enter a level. You can pick any of the snipers, any of the SMGs, the three, three of the pistols. Actually, thinking about it, I guess maybe two of them are new. Anyway, yeah, one or two of them are new. Three of the pistols and, like I said, any of the explosives except for the Panzerfaust. So, it's more or less only the shotguns that you can't enter a level with. Now... You... You know, you... So, yeah, in this you can carry you know, a total of four grenades at a time, you know, two of each of the two types. Which, you know, I mean, in Contagion you can only carry, well, yeah, in both Contagion and Left 4 Dead you can only carry one thrown explosive at the same time, and in Contagion they're downright rare, which I still consider a strength of that, so, you know, you're not running around constantly blowing up zombies. And they also do a ton of damage in contain, including friendly fire. So yeah, and you know, again, Left 4 Dead has more types. You know, the Boomer Bile, which, well, to be fair, I'm not sure what they could have really done with this to fit that. But the Molotov cocktail, it wouldn't have made it would have made a ton of sense to have in there. And yeah, it's like, well, it wasn't only the Russians, and was it like, still, you know. During World War II, the Russians were a big part of that. Give them a Molotov cocktail. That would, yeah. But, yeah, the only new explosive here is the Panzerfaust. 
and it's rare in spite of not being that much more useful than the other explosives. The, you know, the main difference between that and the other explosives is you don't have to plant it, which is as much a, you know, yeah, it's as, as much of a downside as, as, it, as it is an improvement. You know, for the others, it's like, oh man, I have to go all the way out there and plant. But really, that just means that you have to plant them where you know the zombies will pass, because again, the second time you play, you know where they're going to be and where they get to there from and such. Yeah, you know, and, and yeah, it is fair that you know, if you get into a bad situation, you may get a lot of use out of the cancer virus. But again, why is it so rare? It's also not that much more useful than just the straight up shotguns. You find ammo for the Panzer Faust sometimes, you know, a twice as many times as you'll find the Panzer Faust itself. And the ammo by itself is useless, which again, why not just let the player like throw it or plant it as you know, explosive trap. Maybe use it like the dynamite, where you have to shoot it to trigger it or something, but yeah. And the... You know, and it also makes you wonder, why is it the only big gun you get? You know, why not a flamethrower, which again, I believe they did use back then. You know, and again, you don't have to make it like super useful, but just give us that, you know, or you know, some stationary mortars. Maybe you get to man the, the gun of one of the stuck of, of one of the tanks. Maybe it's you know maybe the only thing that really happened to the tank was that like the you know the tank treads were destroyed. That means it can't move anymore. It might still be able to use the cannon. And again, just for maybe some of the sieges or the like, one of the players used the cannon and then the other players may have to, you know, be you know, protect him because what does he do if a kamikaze, you know, comes by? And he's not necessarily going to be of much use against the elite because the elite, it really is just headshot. So, yeah, you know, one other thing, you know, they, they might as well just let us use those machine gun posts that you got to use in v2 i have no idea why they removed those it makes more, much more sense to have it in this than in that and yeah again you know yeah that would also really fit with the left for dead kind of thing which yeah again in left for dead you know other than the the big guns it also has the stationary gatling gun and in that you know the bigger guns include a grenade launcher you know, a, a, yeah, a carried machine gun, M60, I believe, and just, yeah, you know, and in that you can get a chainsaw, which genuinely just saws right through the enemies, and other tons of fun melee weapons, and yeah, just really highlights how little you get in this, and it's it's really noteworthy that you have essentially the same guns now, when you're fighting an infinite army of zombies, as you did when you were using pinprick attacks in, you know, Berlin, the city surrounded, near the end of World War II, which is very distinctly not a huge, you know, yeah, not a huge fight overall. The explosive traps are great. The, you know, given that you're facing dozens of enemies at once, you know, yeah, it's especially, especially the tripwire. You know, you can place it, again, you know, sometimes know exactly where they're coming from, but yeah, you can place it at a door. There, you know, there might be a really large door that you have to open, and you can place you know, yeah, tripwire there and just and then tell it to open the door and the moment that some of them start walking, yeah, you know, I think I've scored like 30 something kills on one like that. So yeah. And you know, something I do really appreciate about the explosive traps is that you do have to keep in mind, you know, the explosions 
carry. So if you place several explosives near each other, they will blow up at the same time. So you want to make sure there's enough distance between them. And again, be careful where you shoot the kamikaze, because if he dies like between two reasonably distant away from each other explosives, he might blow both of them up, you know. And, you know, it is too bad that you, you know, there is no being on fire in this, you know, you can't accidentally, you can't yourself catch on fire. Yes, I tried, of course. And you also can't, you know, which is too bad, you know, contagion allow, does allow for that, you know. And, you know, especially zombies and such, but, you know, also compared to Left 4 Dead, where you can straight up set enemies on fire. You know, it's not just, well, a zombie might walk through. No, you can set them on fire with a Molotov cocktail. That is probably why there's no Molotov cocktail or flamethrower in this, because the engine isn't made for people being set on fire, and that didn't make them realize, hey, maybe you should actually make a new engine or just scrap this all together, because it's not going to come out to be that great of a product at the end of the day. Now, the... Yeah. Before... Yeah, before a level, you... Yeah, I mentioned that. You can snipe fuel tanks and valves on explosive things. I don't know if you can still snipe grenades on belts. I didn't really... It's especially because the, the zombies are usually moving, you know, they usually know where you are and they're moving towards you. So, yeah, you know, why, like I said, it's difficult enough to get a headshot. Am I gonna see if I can spot the grenade on their belt and then shoot it and see if, yeah, no. And, yes, yeah, some of these explosions are tiny, so small that they couldn't, they, you know, they, they don't kill, they barely even hurt these zombies, so you wonder why you can blow that thing up at all. Now, you know, it's it's like, it's, you know, Grand Theft Auto 4, you know, explosive barrels. Now, you may still accidentally pick up a gun you didn't mean to because you, you know, still it's the same key regardless of which gun you want to pick up and you can't like point to indicate and you know this more means that you might accidentally swap out the one you want in the safe house which might have one of your partners pick that up instead you know it doesn't in, in V2 it was real common that you accidentally you'd be trying to loot a corpse and then you'd accidentally pick up the almost empty gun that the other guy had been carrying. That seldom happens here, but it's not that they fixed it, it's just that the enemies don't carry guns that you can pick up most of the time. You know, so, yeah. Now, safe houses are not the only places that have checkpoint saves even for co-op. And you can access most of the guns from right away, so it doesn't really build up to that. Again, Left 4 Dead, you know, one and two don't have that many guns, but in two it might take you a while to try out all the different melee ones. And especially, you know, I already mentioned the, the special guns those are more rare to, you know, access and such. And there it also really makes sense that they're rare because they are awesome. You know, you have to use them right, but they are awesome. And this is more of an arcade game like Left 4 Dead, where, you know, Contagion goes for more realistic, you know, down-to-earth kind of thing. And, you know, something that this does do that Left 4 Dead doesn't is you can focus aim and you can sprint. Now, and, you know, like Left 4 Dead and unlike Contagion, in this 
you always carry a pistol, you always carry a secondary, you know. Yeah, it, the, the moment you have a primary gun, which in this case is always, you can always, you are always carrying it. And in this case, also the secondary gun. You know, Left 4 Dead, you, do, you might start up with only a pistol or a melee weapon. A pistol. And you, you know, you will have to find a primary weapon, but then you do have a primary weapon. Then you can swap it for another, but you can actually only be not carrying around a primary weapon. Which, yeah, in Contagion, yeah, you might start out with almost no weapons, and yeah, and you can drop them. Now, when you restart a level, you won't get to, you know, select different guns. It's only the first time you enter a level, you know, be it by joining a match in progress or, you know, actually starting the level from the start. Now, and, you know, this does also mean, you know, in addition to, you know, meaning that you may have different guns, that's, you know, your choice, of course, you will also have the ammo reset, you know, when you enter the new level, and, again, you can't enter the new level with a Panzerfaust or either of the shotguns, and that, I again, really respect. That's something that forces you to play it in a more specific way. It's it's like Oni, you know, I, I really respect when games, and that again is like Contagion, you start out the level with, you know, a certain amount of guns and ammo and that's it, you know, you don't get to bring a badass weapon, which again, Left 4 Dead, you know, again, not, not a criticism of Left 4 Dead, but just by comparison, that is more more arcade in that, you know, you do get to carry, you know, if you pick up a chainsaw in level one and you don't use it up before like level five of that campaign, yeah, you can keep it through all of that. Now, and you know, in this and in Oni, you're kind of forced to, and Contagion, you're kind of, you end up in a situation where near the end, you could maybe just spend all your ammo because you're not going to keep it anyway. And that, again, is something I like. That it puts you in that situation where it's really like last chance, last call, you know. And... You know, the, the close quarters combat is still not that good. You know, it's just the, the third person perspective and the way it yeah, it's just not particularly good. Frankly, if you're really close to an enemy, you know, almost no matter what gun you have, if, if you're, like, practically touching bodies, you may not want to aim, you uh, focus aim, you may just want to fire the gun, because, you know, he'll fire from, uh, you know, from the hip, and that might actually hit the other one, where if you get it up to, you know, you might shoot right next to him or something, or just shoot a place that isn't that useful and yeah you can take a couple of shots from the hip where you don't particularly aim where you aim in his basic direction and that might be more useful which again I respect that that is an option that yeah the HUD is still minimal with you know basically you can see how much ammo you have, what weapons you have, and the objective marker if you prompt those to be, you know, otherwise there's basically, I think it's pretty much nothing that, yeah, so again, that's a good, you know, for, you know, you're purely focusing on what's in, you know, the game and you're less distracted by it very clearly being a game, of course, that is somewhat undermined by telling you the amount of points per, you know, anytime you kill someone, it tells you so and so many points. So, you know, where, where it's not really, you know, 1 and B2, it was more when you got a specific, you know, and particularly impressive shot. And I should maybe also say, the, the fact that it has international leaderboards might be, you know, partially you know, the reason for it being so 
scripted that they want to make sure you have the exact same zombies you know at your disposal for killing you know and again the you know the first two are also very scripted but again the first two you play it through maybe once and that's about it and then you play multiplayer which is less you know it's still yeah I, I spoke about why it's too narrow in my review of V2 but then again you know Left 4 Dead survival mode that does allow you to compare and that's very you know that's entirely by the AI director so that's so yeah again it's not really an excuse not even a bad excuse and you know yeah the you know bullets might penetrate several bodies and not not necessarily limit to the sniper either and throwing is like before you see the path it will take unless you know it it might actually hit some if if it might hit a zombie in the head and then just plop down at his feet instead which is pretty annoying i again it might be that here the enemies are always moving where before they weren't so it you know there you are more likely anyway it's annoying but yeah you'll see the path you can direct it with the mouse you can even move as you're you know getting ready to to throw it and he has a pretty good arm and you can throw from cover although it doesn't mean you're sticking all the way out from cover same as when you shoot from cover now you know there are those that say that the pistol and you know SMG I should maybe note when I say that I I say it to not take credit for something that I agree with but that someone else already noted I'm not trying to do the Fox News thing of no 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 I didn't say it someone else said it so if you want to argue that point I didn't say it. no 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 I you know I can see their point I don't necessarily fully agree but I can definitely see their point yeah the the use of the pistol and SMG are still not that fluid. That's part of what I mentioned before. When they get real close, it's still kind of awkward. Again, the game is not made for this really up close, which again, I'm sorry, but Contagion and Left 4 Dead are great for up close. You know, when when you use the melee, in part because it's a first person shooter, actually, now that I think about it, I might have earlier referred to this as first person shooter. It isn't. It's a third-person shooter. You only get first-person when you aim through the scope and look through the binoculars. But anyway, yeah, those being first-person shooters and allowing, this could have allowed for first-person shooter, you know, like a number of third-person shooters do. But, but yeah, in those, you can tell because you're like aiming, okay, I want to chop this guy's head off if you're playing Contagion. Okay, I want to you know, okay, the enemy's that close to me, now I melee attack in Left 4 Dead, you know. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't have to suck. Now, and aiming with, you know, guns, there's always, you always have to take range and recoil into account. Like I said, there's binoculars, but they're just, you know, it's just that it gives you more of the screen, you know, it, like where the, the scope might be like, this or something the the binoculars are like this of the overall screen and yeah and it has good zoom as well but you know you can no longer tag there's no map whatsoever you could say that you know well you don't really need it you didn't really need it in you know there are times where you maybe don't need it but yeah you didn't necessarily need it in the others but yeah you know for how eerie this can be, it's also kind of bland and gray. And Left 4 Dead 2 showed that excuse me, you can have a lot of vibrant color without the zombies losing their threat. You know, I I'd still say, you know, Left 4 Dead 2, that's it's the 80s zombie apocalypse that would be really cool to experience, where the first game is the zombie apocalypse that is really devastating to us. But, you know, still even yeah, I Left 4 Dead 1 has much more color and nuance than this and it and that is used for great contrast you know when you're 
running through a hospital. You know, it's white and still at times downright clinical, but then you see all these barricaded doors and these zombies are rushing at you, you know. Now, but this does get some nice, you know, 1980s horror, you know, effect atmosphere, you know, with very John Carpenter-esque keyboard music and, you know, gloom and fog and such. Now, you will come upon debris, smoke, bricks, paper flying in the wind. Now those, you know, can be a bit more dirty and, you know, yeah, again, kind of ugly and really, yeah, dead. You know, it, it, the, the atmosphere reeks of death. And, you know, there, there are some parts of the world that feel living or feel a lot, yeah. The graphics are great for the time. The objectives are always simple. Now, the safe house is where you respawn if you die. And until then, it's a static third-person perspective camera on one of your co-op partners, you can't talk about which one, in black and white and with almost no sound. I think if he's taking damage, you hear that, but that's it. The levels are small, but there are times where, you know, it varies between tight quarters with, you know, short, you know, close quarters combat and these nice open areas that do really allow for tactics and good sniping and such and these straight paths, so yeah, lots of shooting galleries, which happened in V2, but it wasn't anywhere near this common. And, you know, there's a sewer level, of course. Now, much like V2, this has really scripted events, and at the same time, it can be very difficult to find your way because what looks like the right path often isn't and vice versa what really doesn't look like you could pass through there sometimes turns out to be now the the locations aren't particularly memorable a lot of them feel like they're just v2 ones just slightly rebuilt or, you know, stuff moved around a little. There's a church, a cathedral, a library, a factory, you know, docks, uh, subway tunnels, including subway tunnels, and yeah, I may have already mentioned, but the five levels. And, you know, when, when you play co-op, you can play any of these five levels, you know, completely regardless of order. When you play single player, you have to play them in order and just because you beat a level in co-op doesn't mean you've beaten it in single player. And yeah, the locations feel too similar to each other. And you know, and it feels like they just put you right back in the V2 ones, which I would almost say, you know, they don't quite, but I feel like, you know, with some minor alterations they more or less could have, especially the multiplayer ones because some of those already have, maybe all of those, it's been a while you know, they're already separated into two sides for the two teams you could have zombies approaching from one side and the co-op players on the other you know, that would, yeah, make a ton of sense now some parts of these levels are falling apart And that means that, you know, there's like fires have broken out and machineries going haywire and, you know, there are electrical wires exposed, you know, swinging, hanging from the ceiling. There are still these, you know, parts of areas that are like really blocky with just one texture, such as brick piles, and it's, just, it's really awkward, really obvious. And you really do have to wonder 
why are you the only four people left in Berlin? I mean, does that mean that turning into a Nazi zombie puts the uniform on you as well? I, I can completely understand, like, if we're talking, these are all the fallen Nazis in Berlin. Okay, sure, but where's everybody else? Berlin was not an empty place near the end of World War II. It was actually pretty important how, you know, the, the fighting there. Yeah, I mean, again, not like huge. I mean, we're, we're not talking like, you know, the, the Eastern Front at the worst times, but still, it wasn't empty. And I don't know, I guess that means that the four players are immune, but why? It, it never even attempts to explain why and yeah you know and if it's not that they're immune then again where is everybody how is pretty much no one else I mean you you hear the couple of people over the radio but that's the that's the entire indication of there being other people at all you know and they they don't appear to know mostly don't appear to know that you're even around that you can hear them they're just you know on the radio because they feel they should warn or they maybe have an order to give or something you know so yeah again there's no it feels like if you weren't there the game would you know these these characters would behave much in the same way and at the end of the day this just is not that much fun to play and if there's one thing you know especially once you get past the four or five hours that it'll take you to beat co-op you know and if, if there's one thing a game called Nazi zombie army should provide other than an army of Nazi zombies it's fun I've read other parts of this franchise the links are in the description box Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.